This is The Annex, a sociology podcast. I'm Joseph Cohen from the City University of New York. Today, interrogating ethnography. Our panelists are Margaret Hagerman from Mississippi State University, Jean Beeman from Purdue University, and Leslie Hinkson from Georgetown University. Our discussion was recorded on March 27th, 2019. How many of you guys have seen that back and forth between on context between Michael Burroway and I don't know how to pronounce his name, Stephen Lubet? Does anybody know? I always say it's Lubet, but I just say that because it's French. I mean, so I don't know. I always oh, yeah. French names like in French. Look at you hauling in your, your cultural capital. Yeah, like I just assume that, but that could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and as a New Yorker, I would have just said love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, let's go with Lubbett, is uh, a professor from Northwestern. <laughs> Lubet is a professor from Northwestern. And he wrote an interesting piece on documenting ethnographic research, or not documenting, fact-checking. And basically, I mean, to, uh, I think, people in the field, it's some issues that we've all thought about, you know, uh, he basically talked about ethnographic standards of evidence and whether thinking about legal standards of evidence might help us build better ethnographies. And uh, in his original argument, you know, he just talked about uh, triangulating uh, narrative accounts with, uh, you know, official records, or uh, I think that's the basic thrust of it, uh, and developing what he calls an institutional skepticism or adversary testing, where basically when you're confronted with an ethnography, we develop the practice of going out and fact checking what's being said to see if we can see if we can trust the ethnography. So then Michael Borowoy issues a response and truthfully, I didn't find it to be very compelling or forcefully coherent. Does any, did anybody read it and read it very sympathetically? Cause I can give you a, my rendering of it, but it might not be as sympathetic. I did not read it. Give your rendering. All right. Well, I just think he was like, you're nitpicking. It's sort of, this was a very standard response. He's like, uh, he, he accuses Lubet of nitpicking and uh, uh, saying, you know, if finding a factual inconsistency doesn't invalidate the totality of the observation and that true objective facts are hard to find and all facts are seen through a prism of, you know, subjective opinion or viewpoint or whatever. I, I mean, we all know, you know, we know this take. And well, first of all, if any of you have followed this, what do you think of that idea developing an institutional skepticism about ethnography? Is this something that we really need? Is it productive? Should we be going in and fact checking? I, I thought that that was what we were supposed to do anyway. Yeah. I thought one of the norms of the scientific community was this thing called organized skepticism. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know what, like, sh like, show me your evidence. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and let me also read your interpretation. And then, you know what, I just might be doing a little bit of, you know, Googling, <laughs> right? <laughs> or, or if I'm, if I'm from the place, I might go and walk around myself. I mean, these are things that, uh, as, as someone who does, who does consume ethnographies that I think about these things all the time. So, right. yeah, I mean, I guess what I find sort of odd about his line of Stanley Lubet or Lubet's uh, line of critique and, you know, not just this piece, but also the whole book that he wrote about interrogating ethnography. It, mm. it sort of presumes that like ethnographers are already doing this. So the sort of sense of it is already built into what we're doing as ethnographers. So I sort of feel like it's a right. bit of a um, straw man's argument in that sense. Like who is, who is the ethnographer who's saying we don't do this? Like, I don't know who that person is. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I think we've had some cases in the recent past. No, but, but, no, but seriously though, but, but like, I think, I think, I think it's, I think it, it's like, how much is Alice Goffman's work? Hey, I never said any names. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I, no. Go, go, go. Finish your thought. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. no. I, no. Yeah, no, of course you did not. No, because <laughs> I want to, I want to bring it up. Um, hmm. I, I don't, but I think the question becomes like, I think he takes on the run and her, you know, her work as indicative of representative of ethnography as a mm. whole. And I don't believe that. I believe that right. that's an exception to a general practice, general practices that ethnographers already do. But I think let's mm -hmm. say you disagree with that. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I, I'm saying that I think maybe we're making a little bit too much of this unless, mm. because 
I I always assumed that and not just the people, not just ethnographers themselves, the ones who are conducting the research, mm -hmm. but also the people who are reading that research, mm -hmm. right? Like all understand that we are meant to not believe everything, <laughs> right? Yeah, we are meant we are meant to read and we are meant to analyze and we are meant to we are meant to judge whether or not the evidence that the ethnographer presents is 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 such that we're like, okay, we think that this is reliable, mm. right? You know, just the same way we look at someone's like tables, <laughs> right? Mm. And we're like, oh, okay, like actually, I don't think that that confidence interval like actually coincides with this, you know, level of significance or whatever, right? right. Um, so uh, I, I just kind of think, like I'm just confused as to why you need a whole book. Yeah, it was a, it's a, I think it's an odd book. So, I mean, I mean, to be honest, like, I think it's an odd critique. So I teach graduate level qualitative methods. And so I decided because I thought that would be like, you know, spice things up. But I think it's, mm -hmm. like, these are the sort of things that I think are built into the method of doing ethnographic research, just sort of how you triangulate, how you know that what people are saying actually makes sense to them, et cetera, et cetera. So like, I don't mm -hmm. really know, I don't know where, why he feels like this intervention is needed. I'm still kind of waiting like I, I, that still is not clear for me, even from the book and from this context piece. Oh. Well, well, it seemed really reactionary to me, right? I mean, it's like here's this, you know, here's this hot story, right? And and the thing is, I mean, I, I, you know, um, to be fair, it wasn't just Alice Goffman. I mean, I think that there have, I mean, even before on the run, there had been other ethnographies that you know have, you know, the kind of results have been called into question, you know, uh, with some of the uh, with some pieces after on the run with people questioning the ethics, you know, of some of the ethnographers. So, right. um, you know, I my whole like I would get like I get it if maybe this book was less i mean i don't know if the book is the book geared towards ethnographers and telling them how to do their work or is it geared towards readers and telling them how to assess uh the evidence i think definitely the former okay, okay. well then i don't see any need i don't see any need for that i think ethnographers know what they're supposed to be doing yeah so that's what I th yeah so i think we're basically i mean i think a lot of that is built into the practice of doing this field work so mm -hmm. that's kind of, yeah but I think your point about the reading thing is well taken. But I think he's actually talking to sort of how do we, how do ethnographers actually do ethnography? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then from what you, from like your summary of Burroughs argument, it sounded a whole lot like, get off my lawn. Kids, yeah, that's, right? that's how I read it exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, this is not your business, right? <laughs> There's something to be said for that. Like, he's not an ethnographer. It's not, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't think. Yeah, I, I guess I just find, I find the, this critique bizarre. And mm -hmm. it's strange to me that he still keeps coming back to this. Maggie, what do you think? You think uh, that there's a, there's a problem in ethnography? Or uh, what's your view on interrogating ethnography? Or at least the idea that there's some type of problem with poorly documented or purely sub poorly substantiated ethnographies going on? I mean, I think I agree with basically um, what Leslie and Jean were saying. I mean, I know that the Goffman thing is very sensational and there's been so much to do about it, you know, over time and it's like, doesn't go away ever. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will not die. Right. right. And I don't know. So I just, I guess I just feel like, well, certainly there are definitely ethnographies that like we can all critique and talk about. I, I, think generally ethnographers are doing what they're supposed to be doing so mm -hmm. yeah yeah i, I guess agree. that's that's not going to sell a book you're all doing a good job by joe cohen <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like yeah because his whole angle is sort of no one sought to do these things it's like everyone's not like i could be personal with those kind of arguments he so. okay so he has to there's an interesting third follow-up piece that discusses alice goffman and uh, he talks about how in some states, like, for example, if you're drive if you're driving around with someone who intends to kill someone else and you actually go through with it, in some laws, you are guilty of murder as well. Yeah. For participating in a crime. And uh, there was an interesting uh, issue that uh, this guy, uh, Lubet, uh, Lube, uh, Ray. Love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. But, you have to take a for that to me. <laughs> oh my God. <Is> it, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah 
But like, what do you? What, what, I I thought that was a point that was worth pressing uh, with your graduate students. Like, what about yeah. the idea of studying crime, like a Sudhir Venkatesher or uh, Alice Goffman, who purportedly go and hang out with bad people and watch them do bad things? Um, should should Goffman had that actually happened? Should Goffman have tried to stop this guy from you know trying to get his revenge killing? Should you know if we're studying drug dealers, and we're watching a drug dealer deal drugs to to kids, like what what are the ethical boundaries? Like there's clear legal boundaries, and you can be at risk. But what would you tell your students about this uh, this type of risk? Well, I mean, I think yeah, I think that what you just presented. I mean, I think that's like fruitful to discuss in a graduate seminar mm -hmm. more so than the other issues that I I sort of brought up that mm -hmm. he's brought forth because it's like yeah, like you know what is the line. In terms of what what are you willing to do? What consequences are you willing to endure, et cetera, et cetera? Like I think that is all sort of part of how ethnographers figure out how they're actually going to do the work that they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I kind of, you know, I kind of see it as, you know, like what would Lenny Briscoe do when he was <laughs> undercover on Law and Order? What lines <laughs> wouldn't Lenny Briscoe cross, right? And if and if and if Lenny Briscoe isn't gonna cross that line, you sure as hell shouldn't shouldn't be crossing that line because he's got a certain amount of of legal immunity because he's a detective, right? An ethnographer is not a detective. An ethnographer has not been imbued with like special dispensation from the law to engage in unlawful behavior or to aid and abet in unlawful behavior. Mm. I would tell students, you know, like, uh, so, so, you know, I could imagine there are some young students who are willing to whisk, risk legal hazard to get this career. I mean, look at the sacrifices people make to become academics. Oh, yeah. I, you know, and I would tell students, listen, it's just a job. Like, <laughs> you're, it's just a job once you get it. So don't, don't, you know, don't risk your, uh, don't risk yourself for that. But it's interesting the way that you set that up though, Joe, because it makes me, makes me also think about like the sort of romance, for lack of a better word, of doing these kinds of ethnographies mm -hmm. sort of making people feeling like it's very sexy to be in this, you know, you know, in this around dangerous people doing dangerous things, yeah. et cetera. So I think that's part of kind of what's happening here too, as well. Oh yeah. The, the bad decisions that you make when you're young. Exactly. But I also think that there's something to be said for like thinking about things like positionality. You know, I mean, like obviously it's it's fun to talk about the legal side of things and the risks that come. But I think that for most ethnographies, that's not those are not the real central concerns or issues, you know? I mean, I think for a lot of us that every day navigating the field and sort of making decisions that have ethical implications, you know? And so I think that in terms of teaching, you know, those are the, those are the really, not that the legal stuff isn't important too, mm -hmm. but I think that that stuff is, is also really um, important. It shouldn't get left out and, and thinking about like, what are, the, like, who are you and what kind of project are you going to be doing given your position, you know? Um, especially if we want to challenge some of the, you know, problematic nature of ethnographies that are told from a position of, you know, someone in a position of power about people who are marginalized, you know? So I think it's more complicated than just the legal stuff, at least in my view. So what, what, what do you advise students along those lines? Like, uh, so I, I come in and I, I'm a student, and I, all I want to do is be a badass. And hang out with, uh, I, I, if I'm getting you right, you're saying, I, I, I understand you to be saying like, or are you saying, uh, think about the, the broader implications of what you're studying and don't narrowly uh, focus on the legal? Is that what you're, you're getting at? I just think that, you know, often if you have students that want to just like do something that's dangerous or something, which I have never had students like that. I mean, I've had students that have proposed projects that have some risk involved for sure. But, mm -hmm. um, but if I did have a student that was in it for that reason, I probably would not encourage them to <laughs> continue. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I think the reality of doing ethnography is that there are so many complexities. I mean, you're trying to understand processes, like everyday processes, how people make sense of things. And so mm -hmm. that come that you're dealing with people and that comes with all kinds of implications. And so I just think, you know, we should be teaching our students to think about where you're located as a person, you know, like what's your race, what's your gender, what, you know, how, how are these, how is your position going to shape the project that you're doing? And 
um, yeah, I think it's important. But Maggie, do you think like the sexiness, like the sizzle sells the steak a little bit? Like I could give you like a really well organized and executed, but humdrum study on corporate decision making, or I could give you like a slipshot ethnography where I live with Nazis for two years. Which one do you think is going to get the job? <laughs> you know? Or which one's going to get the book contract? Uh, I got to yeah. say living with the Nazis, they'll probably get you the book contract. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. am I wrong? No, I agree. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, I guess it's one of the tensions. But, uh, if they're going to live with the Nazis, then, you know, you should be, I, I think that students should be thinking ahead of time about, okay, well, what is that going to mean? You know, like, what are the, what are the kinds of situations I might find myself in? You know, what are the risks? Um, I don't think anyone just like goes into the, well, I hope people just don't go into the field, not having a sense of what might present itself. You know, I mean, obviously you can never predict. You've been listening to The Annex, an academic sociology podcast. You can visit our show site at sociocast.org slash annex. We are on Twitter at Sociannex and on Facebook, The Annex Sociology Podcast. Our producer is Laseth Moreno. Music by Lena Orsa. I'm Joseph Cohen. Thank you for listening. Thank you.